What is up everyone? Welcome to Prepared Pantry Presents. I'm Mark and today I want to talk about cookbooks. A few good cookbooks can become the foundation for an endless variety of your own creations. These are my favorite cookbooks, but I'm calling this video your favorite cookbooks because I really think that if you choose to pick up any or all of these yourself, you'll consider them to be your favorites too. Now, if you do happen to be interested in any of these, I've included Amazon links in the descriptions and a pinned comment below. Many of them are even available in Kindle versions, although I tend to prefer a physical book myself, at least when it comes to cookbooks. That said, if you're interested in a physical book, I do encourage you to visit your favorite locally owned bookstore. For me, that would be Books on the Square in Providence. I've included their info down in the description too for anyone who might be interested. Your local bookstore can often order almost any book you want, whether it's stocked or not. And while sometimes it may cost a few dollars more, you'll be doing your part to support a local business, all while treating yourself to a wonderful in-person experience with real people. You may even find that your local bookstore is already selling through Amazon Marketplace, making it kind of the best of both worlds for those who prefer to do their shopping online. Before we get started, I just want to thank you all again for watching. If you're a subscriber, then double thanks for sticking with me while we explore more and more recipes and food topics. If you're not a subscriber yet, consider clicking the button down below or the watermark over in the corner. When you do, just remember to hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I release a new video. All right, so like I said, this here represents a collection of some of my favorite cookbooks. In fact, many of my recipes, as you see them in my videos, have their genesis in a recipe from one of these books. The first book I want to talk about is Joy of Cooking. This one is widely considered to be the granddaddy or grandmama of all modern cookbooks. The first edition came out in the early 1930s, and this is the most recent edition, which came out in 2019. The book covers a ton of recipes and basic techniques with charts and tables for common things like measurements, temperatures, and conversions. It was one of the first cookbooks to be written in a way that could be readily understood by anyone with little, if any, prior cooking knowledge. The recipes are all tried and true, tested and updated through the decades. They're practically guaranteed to work if you follow them, owing to the fact that they've been made so consistently and repeatedly by so many people for such a very long time. You don't need to understand the science to know what works, it just does, and they tell you. Next up is one of a few books from the same publisher, America's Test Kitchen. ATK produces two shows for PBS, America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country. The two being largely similar, save that the latter delves more into what you might call Southern style cooking or comfort foods. While ATK is a for-profit business, they sell these books as well as several membership-based online video and reference services. I often consider them to be a sort of consumer reports of the cooking and kitchen world. They're constantly performing new unbiased tests on tools, appliances, and ingredients. They purchase all of the items that they put through their battery of tests and they avoid letting manufacturers influence the results. While they're certainly not a sponsor of my videos or anything, I do enjoy their shows and their cookbooks. In fact, my partner and I had the rare opportunity last year to visit the ATK test kitchens and television studios in Boston. We not only were able to extensively tour the facilities and meet some of the personalities you see in Cook's Country and America's Test Kitchen episodes, we even got to stay and watch the filming of an upcoming Cook's Country episode. So the first ATK book is the companion to America's Test Kitchen. Every year or so, it's updated and made current with the recipes from the latest TV episodes. The book includes little explanations of the science and the execution with why this works sections, and includes an enormous number of scientifically researched and tested recipes, which have gone through rigorous testing by both professional and home cooks. Food appliance and gadget reviews from the show are included with references uh, along with the same sorts of helpful charts as Joy of Cooking. Again, similar to Consumer Reports, product reviews can help you hone in on the best tools and ingredients. All in all, it's a beautiful hardcover book with amazing photographs and illustrations. It's definitely at the top of my list. Right up there is the next ATK book, uh, which is the companion to the Cook's Country TV show. Similar to the first book, this one covers the anthology of recipes covered on the Cook's Country television show and includes similar product tests and reviews from the show, as well as similarly great illustrations and photographs. Knowing the recipes have uh, somewhat of a more country and southern bent, it can be helpful to review recipes in both books as well as The Joy of Cooking. Uh, it helps you develop a little bit more of a breadth and understanding of a recipe that you might want to change or develop yourself. The fourth book that I want to look at, and the third from ATK, is The Ultimate Burger. This one is a great resource for better understanding your burgers and covers everything from constructing the patties themselves using different meats to the cooking and other ingredients that result in some absolutely outstanding burgers. I can honestly say I don't think I've made a single burger as referenced in this book, but I've made many that were my own variations and information on things like how best to form a burger patty are super helpful. Okay, 
Last but not least, I really wanted to save this one for the end because it's kind of something special. Uh, this is The Art of Cooking and Serving, published in 1934 by Procter & Gamble as a thinly veiled way for them to hawk their new product, Crisco. A lot, but not all of the recipes in the book include Crisco for things like baking and frying. I'm actually planning to delve a little bit deeper into the science and history of Crisco and shortening in general related to an upcoming video that should be out in the next week or so. I'll try to remember to put up a card in the corner when it comes out. One of the more interesting things I found with this cookbook is what it says about America in the 1930s. This book came out at the height of the Great Depression, arguably the worst economic downturn in American history, and certainly the worst of the 20th century. It's clear that this book is aimed at the housewife trying to make the most of her food dollar for her family. You'd think that back then just everybody was having a bad time, but then you notice the first couple of chapters are titled Table Service and the Servantless Household and Table Service and the House with a Servant. The former clearly being meant to introduce a newly servantless population to the wonders and satisfaction of doing their own cooking and serving for the very first time. The latter, though, still goes into great detail about all of the things customary and expected for those looking to hire, clothe, and instruct a proper servant to do the cooking. Clearly, some people were still doing well, and it was enough to justify this information being included in a widely circulated marketing cookbook. I mean, they even go over things from what your servant should wear to how a place setting should be arranged and why. I also find the nutrition information in this to be a little funny in a quaint and sort of kitschy way. The recipes in this book are all very, very simple, and I have no doubt many of them will still work just fine today, though they're not always easy to execute. For example, do you know the difference between a slow oven, a moderate oven, and a fast oven? Each represents a specific range of temperatures, hardly precise. While old cookbooks may not be the best at teaching us recipes, they do stand, I think, as a sort of window into the mindset of the past. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Again, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you already own any of these cookbooks, then tell me down in the comments what you like about them and which may be your favorite recipes. If you have another favorite cookbook, then tell me about that too. Thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.